one. I rise to move that this House, one, notes that the motor neuron disease is a complex, high needs disease that generally has rapid onset causing significant disability. Two, notes that the average life expectancy from diagnosis to death with MND is only 27 months. Three, recognises that MND SA is the only NGO in SA providing equipment and supports to more than 200 South Australians living with motor neuron disease and their family carers. Four, acknowledges that NDIS and My Age Care packages often don't adequately cover the needs of people living with motor neuron disease due to the rapid onset of the disease. Five, recognises that people with MND often die while waiting for support package or plan to be put in place or increased. And six, recognises the work MND SA do to support the South Australian MND community on a tight budget relying on fundraising donations and bequests. I'd like to thank the following people who have raised my awareness and knowledge of this complex and aggressive disease. These people are courageous and compassionate and I commend them. Firstly, my King resident, Chris Grigg, who first wrote to me about this disease and his situation. He wrote, I am a Golden Grove resident and a sufferer of MND and I'm emailing you to possibly seek help in gaining funding for MND SA. Motor Neuron D Disease SA and Fight MND are two completely different organisations and I do support both organisations. MND SA survives solely on donations and fundraising, so you could imagine the amount of time wasted in raising funds rather than providing support and care to motor neuron disease sufferers and their families. I've been advised to go through my local member for help with this and hopefully you can help me to start putting pressure on the Health Minister and our State Government to help with assisting MND SA. It is Chris's letter that has led me to raise this motion and to try to raise awareness of the people in our electorates across this House who are suffering from MND and to raise awareness of the great work that Motor Neuron Disease SA do and share their need in this state for more support. I also would like to acknowledge Brian Wittenberg and Anna Penhall, who are here this morning suffering from motor neuron disease, and they joined us here but have had to go home um, before this is read. I would like to acknowledge Jeff Thomas, uh, MND SA chairperson, who also lost his wife Mary to MND. I also acknowledge another good and courageous man, Greg Downton, a local community member living with motor neuron disease who couldn't be here today. I acknowledge Gary Tiswell, a passionate King resident who is advocating on behalf of those impacted by motor neuron disease and currently has two friends suffering from motor neuron disease. I acknowledge Karen Percival, the Chief Executive Officer of MNDSA and the Minister for Health who has been swift in responding to my requests for more information on the current state of support for those living with motor neuron disease in South Australia who supported my request to raise this motion in the House. In addition, I thank my Liberal colleagues who supported my request to move this motion in the House and explore how we can provide more future support. Likewise, I thank the Member for Cavill, Bagco, Ghana and Member for Mount Gambia for reordering their motions today so that we can speak on this important matter. Mr Speaker, I have been told by many people that Motor Neuron Disease SA offer support important support to care for their motor neuron disease sufferers, especially after diagnosis of this often terminal disease. I've been told by sufferers that after a diagnosis, your whole world has been turned upside down and without motor neuron disease, SA's ongoing support and care, they don't know how their families and themselves would have functioned or been able to move forward. I am told by the CEO that those suffering with this disease and advocates and friends, that there is limited support in South Australia for sufferers. I have been told additionally that there is confusion and a lack of awareness in the wider community that motor neuron disease SA has little to do with fight motor neuron disease and this contributes towards a key issue that motor neuron disease SA in their um, lack of funding. 
Motor neuron disease SA survive on fundraising, donation and grants. And as we all know, trying to fundraise and get donations is time consuming and resource intensive. And for MND SA, their fundraising efforts are made harder by the general public's lack of awareness of the differences between the bodies out there raising funds. Motor Neuron Disease SA has told me that the MND associations in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and Western Australia all get funding from their state governments, which is why they are appealing to our state government for funding support so that MND SA can spend less time on activities trying to raise funds and more time supporting, most importantly, those with MND and their families. I would like to summarise some facts about MND in SA to help raise awareness and knowledge of the state of play in SA today. Motor Neuron Disease SA is a not-for-profit, non-government funded organisation and fundraising is its prime source of income. Its aim is to see a world free of MND, but in the meantime, MND SA will continue to provide the best possible care to clients and their loved ones. During 2017, MND SA provided care information and support to over 200 South Australian people and their families living with MND. They provided support and information for over 62 newly diagnosed with MND and their families. Support for the families of the 47 people registered with MND SA who passed away. 10,458 contact points with people with MND provided to 151 clients with equipment from a pool of 303 items, 187 information packs and education sessions which 528 people attended. Mr Acting Speaker, on Sunday, May the 5th, Walk to Defeat MND fundraiser was held at Clonelg, an event designed to raise awareness of MND and vital funds for MND SA so it can continue to support South Australians living with um, MND. Congratulations and thanks to all staff and volunteers at MND SA for organising the walk. Certainly a job well done, and thank you to the organisers and participants who successfully raised over their target and, in the end, $113,000. A very sad fact of this disease is that there is only a 27-month life expectancy from a diagnosis of MND. Approximately one motor neurone disease SA client will pass away each month due to this disease. And the staff work extensively with clients who are eligible for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. However, due to the nature of MND and short life expectancy, this is often unfulfilled. 68% of all MND SA clients are not eligible for the NDIS. Most clients not eligible for NDIS start on a My Age Care Level 2 package which is a subsidised scheme of approximately $15,000. This means that clients must pay towards every service they receive. This is certainly a matter that I will be advocating for with federal colleagues. Motor Neuron Disease SA assists clients throughout early diagnosis, including early referral to NDIS access, My Age Care referrals, palliative care and completion of companion card applications. Average hours support given to MND client during their journey is equal to 63.6 hours, approximately 2.4 hours per month per person. The MND clinic at Flinders Hospital only runs once a week for three hours and there is a waiting list between clinic visits. There is a number of equipment shortages among clients. Powered wheelchairs, hospital beds, specialised respiratory equipment, mobile shower commodes, tilt and space shower commodes and hoists. MND SA wrote to the Federal Minister for Health, Honourable Greg Hunt MP, on the 18th of April this year, seeking $400,000 for essential equipment and ongoing support of $400,000 per year over a five-year period to enable it to support clients which are ineligible for NDIS services. MND SA is different from other MND charities, such as Fire MND, 
importantly because it's focused on helping people who are suffering. On behalf of MNDSA and my King constituents, I ask all families affected by motor neurone disease to share your stories so that awareness is raised about this disease and the support needed to both find a cure and to support those people diagnosed with motor neurone disease and their families. I've said in this house before, I'm personally committed to be a voice for the most vulnerable, vulnerable people in our community and I'm proud of our party because we are fighting to give all South Australians the best health care that they deserve. It is recognised there is a big issue in disability care and support for Australians with motor neurone disease aged 65 years and over and I will continue to advocate to get more support. It is not fair that for some people due to their age, they can't access NDIS and have to rely on aged care services, which I was told just last week at an aged care forum in the North that there certainly are long waiting lists. It is not acceptable that people with complex needs who are waiting for aged care services packages may not receive these in time. What has been made clear to me is that until there's a cure, there is a need for care for sufferers and their families. I thank my colleagues for the opportunity today to recognise serious and most often terminal illness. In summary, motor neurone disease is a progressive terminal neurological disease. It can strike anyone. There is no known cure and no effective treatment for MND. Each day in Australia, two people die from motor neurone disease. Each day in Australia, two people are diagnosed with motor neurone disease. People with motor neurone disease progressively lose use of their limbs and ability to speak, swallow and breathe, and whilst their mind and senses remain intact. The average life expectancy is two and a half years. More than 2,000 people have MND in Australia, of whom 60% are male and 40% are female. For every person diagnosed with motor neurone disease, it is estimated that a further 14 or more members of their family and friends will live with the effect of this forever. I am grateful to the Premier for listening to me and supporting those living with and advocating for funding. And I'm grateful to Karen, Chris, Greg, Gary for their brave approach, especially when they're suffering, to advocate on behalf of others now and in the future for support. MND sufferers, their families and all South Australians deserve better health care and I hope raising awareness of motor neurone disease today together across this chamber will help us to work together across the House to gain support and ultimately a cure. Thank you.